Hello and welcome to today's video. So in this one, we're gonna be unboxing the Bridge Pro keyboard for the iPad Pro 12.9. Now, this is actually a bit of a, a kind of retroactive unboxing and I have been using this one now for the past two years. So the reason why we're unboxing it and reviewing it today is it's on offer for about 70 pounds and I think in the US it's going for about $100, which isn't too bad for this sort of thing. Now there is a new version of this coming out with the like full size trackpad and it looks absolutely gorgeous, but that's about 230 pounds or $230. So if you're after something that is literally just gonna be used as a keyboard case and it's a pretty premium one, then it might be worthwhile having a look at. So let's unbox this thing, show you what's inside and then we'll talk to you about some of the reasons why I personally really really like this device compared to some of the other things on the market. So, so it comes in this nice box here, feels pretty premium and Bridge are known for their premium materials and builds and everything. Now see on the back here you've got all the different ways that you can use it. To be honest, having used this for like two years, there's pretty much only one way that I use this, and that's in its proper keyboard mode. You can use it in a tablet mode, but I don't understand why you'd go to the hassle of taking it out and popping it back in. You can use it in a movie mode, which I suppose would be kind of handy. Um, but yeah, well, let's pop it open. One of the great things about this keyboard, apart from the look and feel of it, is the fact that the battery life in here lasts for about a year, or so bridge claim. And to be honest, after using this thing, I can pretty much say that I very, very rarely have to charge it. Now what comes in the box, you get obviously the bridge keyboard, and pop that aside for the moment. You also get this cool sort of like leather magnet bit that goes onto the back just to help protect the back of your, your iPad. But it also has these little areas here which line up just to help you kind of slot it in. I see you get all your, your bits and bobs in terms of instructions. Sticker as well, so if you're into your stickers. USB Type-C cable and you also get some spare grips as well. So I'll show you what those are in a moment. So first up, this little bit that goes on the back. So literally lines up with your iPad, pop the camera on there, and the magnets then hold it in place. Now, the one thing I like about this is if you're then just using it as a tablet, you've got a little bit of protection on the back there. It just adds a little bit more grip as well. It's a real nice kind of a matte feeling for this. It's very sturdy and it always stays in place. Now, the bridge keyboard itself, honestly, is a really, really nice typing experience. There are a few flaws with it, and I'll go into those in a moment, but first up, the things that are great, it feels very much like a older MacBook. So if you use something like my MacBook Pro 2012 model, keyboards feel almost identical to that. The travel on them, it does take a little bit more of a press, so you do kind of have to push that in a bit more, but overall, it's a really good typing experience. It is Bluetooth, so bear that in mind if you're somebody who absolutely despises Bluetooth, this might not be the keyboard for you, but I've never found any latency issues or anything like that. It's been an overall good experience. These keys are all backlit as well, so again, unlike the older keyboards that you could get for the iPad, you've got a full backlit keyboard, and a row of function keys along the top, which is something that you don't always see, especially from things like the Magic Keyboard. Home button just up there, and a lock button as well, and these all correspond to what you would want to use with the iPad. So on the side here you have the USB Type-C and that's for charging. It doesn't have any kind of pass-through because obviously it doesn't plug into it. And then on the bottom you've got bits about the sort of regulatory stuff and then also these four rubber feet to stop it from sliding across the desk. Now it's really, really well colour matched to the Space Grey iPad um, and it feels very, very solid. Using this on your lap there's no issues or anything like that. It's very nice to use and it's just an overall great experience compared to the more flexible sort of um, Apple keyboards that you can get hold of. Now onto the things I don't like quite as much and that is this hinge mechanism. So to put it in place, let's pop that there so you can see it properly. This slots in, so obviously you're using this back bit here to line it up and mine has loosened over time, which is a good thing because these hinge bits are really, really tight. So once it's open everything, it's a, it's solid. That's a pretty solid hinge, it doesn't really wobble about. If you have it on your lap, it's really good. It does go all the way back as well, so if you're the kind of savage who, I don't know, wants to type like that, that's pretty good. But again, if you are on the couch or something like that, you can kind of kick it up and then use your keyboard, which I suppose isn't too bad. Hinge mechanism closes nicely. There's not really anything to worry about there. And you have these sort of rubber bits here to protect the screen when it's closing. The thing that I don't like is it is putting a lot of pressure onto the side of your screen. So just here and here, and over time, you can definitely feel it. And it always has left me worried. 
However, like I said, I've been using it for about two years and my screen's still going, it's not broken and my iPad isn't bent or anything like that. Now, there is still obviously the ability to pop your pencil on here as well, so it's not too bad, but you can't store it anywhere. So yeah, my screen isn't broken or anything like that, but the big complaint I have is taking it in and out is really, really cumbersome. And there's something they're fixed on the newer models. So if you are in the market for one of the newer ones, it's much, much better in respect to that. Also, when you're taking it out, these sort of rubber bits have a tendency to, oh, there we go, so you pull it, and then it puts more pressure onto one side of the screen, which I don't like. But these rubber bits here tend to always end up pulling off. And the problem that you've got, if you don't notice it, it can go like that, and then you end up with rubber on one side and metal on the other side, which can absolutely <laughs> leave a mark on your iPad. So that's something to be wary of. Like I said, getting it in and out isn't too bad. It's just, it's certainly not as nice as something like the Apple Magic Keyboard or the newer Bridge Keyboard as well. And there is no trackpad on this model. However, on the new version, there is one and it's a massive trackpad, looks really nice to use. Typing experience is pretty damned fantastic on this. I've had no issues using this for the past couple of years. It's a really, really nice typing experience. There's a decent amount of key travel on it and take that from somebody who does a, a lot of typing. I've been able to use this very, very nicely. I do prefer the new Apple Magic Keyboard on my uh, MacBook Pro 16 inch, but that's just a completely different style. However, if you're coming from an older MacBook, something pre-Butterfly Keys, you're gonna find this a very, very familiar typing experience. It feels almost identical, just with a little bit more key travel and depth to it. So overall, for like 70 quid that you can pick these up for at the moment, or like $100 in the US, it's a really, really good overall package. If you're not somebody who's after that trackpad experience, or you're gonna plug a mouse into it anyway, it's a great portable little device to be able to take out on the go. Looks really impressive, as you can see there the color matching and the finish and just the durability of it is just overall, it's a fantastic experience. And it's just absolutely beautiful to type on as well. So we thought we'd do a bit of an unboxing, just kind of a retrospect idea of how this has performed over the past couple of years. It's still going strong for me today. Battery life is pretty much a year on it. So you charge it up that once and then you don't have to worry about it again, which is fantastic. You can also charge it from the iPad as well. So if you're in a pinch and you do run out of charge, you have that ability there. But if you are somebody who does a lot of typing, you need something that's a bit more sturdy to go on your lap or when you're out and about, then the bridge keyboard is probably the one to go for. So as always, I hope you've enjoyed that video. And if you have, hit the like and subscribe button and come along for some more awesome content in the future. If you have any questions about the bridge keyboard at all, throw them down in the comments below and we'll do our best to answer those. In the meantime, stay safe and we'll be back soon with some more awesome content. Bye.